Hello, today we're going to look at balancing equations and it's a very important skill for GCSE chemistry and it's one of those things where you really need to do as much practice as you can to get good at it. So in this video I'm going to go through the basics of what chemistry equations are and then we're going to have a practice at a couple of uh, have a practice at balancing some equations. So firstly I've got some what we call word equations. So there's one at the top there and in that word equation we've got magnesium plus oxygen and that plus sign basically means reacts with. Uh, we've got a plus sign on the second equation here as well and in this case it just means and. So calcium carbonate makes calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Okay the arrow for the first one basically means to make or to produce. So magnesium reacts with oxygen to make magnesium oxide. In the second word equation, the arrow actually represents something breaking down. So calcium carbonate is not reacting with another compound, it's actually breaking down. We sometimes call that decomposition, but it breaks down into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. In this case, we need the help of some heat. Now, in the last equation at the bottom, it's actually not an equation, it's a sentence describing a reaction and we can convert that into a word equation. So what we have is hydrogen, which reacts with oxygen, and we know that reacts with, we could just replace with a plus sign, and to produce is, well, we could say that's the same as to make, so that can be replaced with our arrow, so then we can have a word equation that looks like this. Hydrogen plus oxygen react together to make water. And this is a word equation. We don't actually balance word equations. What we balance are symbol equations. So let's take a look at how we might do that. Now I've got an equation here, a word equation, and the first thing we're going to do is going to go through and look in terms of what's happening uh, with atoms. So here I've got a magnesium atom, two atoms of oxygen, which make O2, that's how oxygen exists in nature, and magnesium oxide is MgO. So these are the formula, the formulae for those different substances. Okay, so we've got those different substances in the diagrams, but why do we need to balance equations? Well, let's have a look at the atoms. Here we've got magnesium, and it, on the right hand side of the arrow we have still got that magnesium we've got one oxygen on each side of the arrow but the problem is we've got a spare oxygen there where did that one go it can't just disappear so we describe this as unbalanced as shown by the number of atoms on each side of the arrow the number of atoms must always be the same so what can we do well we can add another atom of magnesium which can react with that second atom of oxygen. So that would react with that. But now we've got a problem. We haven't got the right number of atoms on the right hand side. So we can see that actually we can have another MgO made on the right hand side. So now we have two magnesium atoms reacting with one oxygen molecule, which is made of two atoms. And that makes two MgOs all the atoms are balanced on each side. So this is our balanced formula equation. Let's just get rid of that one. In fact, if we have only one, we don't need to put the number one in front, we can just leave it as, in this case, O2. Put in the plus sign and the arrow, and there we see what's happening in terms of the atoms in this equation. Okay, so let's have a practice at some ourselves. Now we've got hydrogen and oxygen reacting to make water. We don't actually have to draw the atoms out every time. What we can do is use a method that I'm about to show you. So hydrogen is H2, that's how it exists. O2 exists, oxygen exists as O2 and water is, as you probably know, H2O. What we do is we draw a line where the arrow is to show the right hand side and the left hand side. On the left hand side we list the atoms. So we've got hydrogen and we've got oxygen. On the right hand side we should have the same and yes we've got hydrogen and we've got oxygen. If you don't have the same atoms in this step on both sides you just need to check again because there's something wrong. So how many hydrogen do we have? Well that little two there applies to the hydrogen so we've got two hydrogen atoms. Same with oxygen, a little two means we've got two of those, two atoms of oxygen. On this side We've got H2, now that H2, be, uh, be careful, applies to that hydrogen and not to the oxygen. So we've got two H's and one O, or one oxygen. 
So you can see this is not balanced. So what can we do to balance this equation? So this is unbalanced. Now we need to follow a couple of rules when we're balancing equations. And those are as follows. The first one is that you cannot add, you cannot add a small number next to the, any of the atoms. You cannot add a small number next to the, any atoms. If you want to be fancy, we can call that small number a subscript. But we cannot add those small numbers and we'll see why now. If you look at H2O, you might think, well, I'll just simply put a little two there. That means I have now have two oxygens. There we go, it's balanced. Unfortunately, we cannot do that because H2O2 is not water anymore. It's something called hydrogen peroxide. It's actually a totally different substance and that is actually poisonous. So we can't actually change the little numbers because you change the chemical. The second rule is something that you can do. And what you can do is add large numbers in front of the substances. I say substances because they could be elements or they could be compounds. Okay, so we can add big numbers, for example, two or a four, big numbers like that. These aren't the right numbers, but you understand what I mean. So how do we go about balancing? Oh, also one thing, um, the big numbers must be added before the substance, not within the substance. So you can't, for example, put a little two, a big two, sorry, in front of the oxygen there and say that's balanced. That doesn't work either. So what can we do? Well, if we add our big numbers, we can do a bit of what we call trial and error. So we can try out adding some numbers and see what happens to the number of atoms. So I'm going to work with this oxygen here. If I put a big two in front of the H2O, now that applies to the whole of the H2O, not just the O. So what happens there is we get four hydrogens because two H2s make four atoms of hydrogen. But we do get two atoms of oxygen. Now that is still unbalanced, but the oxygens are balanced. So what can we do about the H2 on the left hand side? Well, if we had a big two there, two H2s make four atoms of hydrogen. So there we go, this is now balanced. There is our balanced formula equation for the reaction of hydrogen with water. Okay, and if you manage to get to that point, you should be quite happy about that. Okay, so the second one is slightly more involved, slightly trickier, but the method is the same. So we put in a line to separate left and right, and we list out the elements. So we've got Na, we've got H, and we've got O. And remember, you must have the same elements on both sides. If you don't, there's something wrong. So Na, I'm going to put H next and O just so that they're in the same order. Makes it a bit easier to organize. And for Na, we have 1. H, we have 2. Remember that 2 applies to the hydrogen. And we have 1 oxygen. On the right-hand side, we can do the same again. Now, if you're feeling comfortable with this, please feel free to pause and have a go at yourself and look at the answer in a minute. But if not, let's continue. So the hydrogens, we've just highlighted there. There's three of them. And the oxygen, there's one. So let's just color code those so we can see. Now, in order to balance this, again, it's a bit of trial and error. So I'm going to work with this here, the NaOH. If I put a two in front of the NaOH, that gives me a two for the number of sodium atoms it gives me four on the right hand side for hydrogen because it's two in the NaOH and H2 as well and then it gives us two oxygen now it's still not balanced but this seems now a bit easier so if we want to balance the Na we could put a two in front of it the hydrogen is in the water molecule there so if we put a big two there that gives us four hydrogens but remember that two applies to the whole of the molecule so we've got our four hydrogens but because we've said two H2Os, it's also two Os as well. So there we go. Our equation is now balanced. Let's just quickly write out our balanced formula equation for that reaction. Nice and neatly below without all the colors. There it is. 2Na plus 2H2O gives us 2NaOH plus H2. Okay, so that's our balanced formula equation. 
let's have a go at a few of these ourselves. Remember, it's all about practice. So I'm going to give you five to practice for yourself and hopefully you'll do lots more practice for these. So here we are. What I would suggest is you get a bit of paper. Don't worry if it looks a bit untidy with all the crossing out and rearranging of numbers. That's what it's all about when you're learning how to do this. But there are five examples. You can give these a go and I'll put the answers up in a moment. So there we go, there's the answers. Hopefully they're all correct. You can compare those to your own. If you got all those right and you're happy, feel free to end the video here. But if not, I'm just gonna go through the thinking process of doing uh, these five examples. So for the first one, we've got iron and chlorine on the left and iron and chlorine on the right. And the first clue there is if you see a two and a three, three chlorines on that side and two on the other, I always uh, work it up to make it six on each side. So to make Cl3 into six atoms of chlorine, we had a big two at the front there and a big three in front of the left hand side. So now we have six chlorine and six chlorine on the left and the right. We need to look at the iron. We've got two on the right now and one on the left. So all we do is add a big two there. It is now balanced. For the second one, it's similar in that we've got three H's on the right and two H's on the left. So we put a two and a three to make it up to six. And the N2 is already as two atoms on the left. Similar for the third one. Let's go two there and three there to make the O2s up to six. And two S's, two S's on each side. Those three are now balanced. This one here, remember, we've got hydrogen peroxide and water, just a very slight difference in atoms and arrangement we get completely different substances but this one is a little bit different to do so let's put a 2h2o there that gives us four h's and four o's on the other side so we could just put a two there we now have four h's and four oxygens and on the last one two n two no2s that give us four oxygens remember it replies to the whole formula there two oxygens on the left, that balances that equation. There we go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.